it is mostly a class prejudice that has made us under theorize and under philosophize know how. Because all the way back to the Greeks, working with your hands, particularly if you were the metallurgist, the, the blacksmith of the Spartans or Athenians alike, the very fact that you didn't come to the Agora to talk, to use language, and to talk about friendship and patriotism made you suspicious. Well, who's that guy who spends all day by the fire hammering you know, metals and producing swords? They love the swords, of course, and they love the, 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 the shields, and they love the adornments. But the blacksmith himself was despised. Traditionally, the very first book on metallurgy comes out in the 14th century. This is the type of knowledge that was transmitted from one generation to another. Now, I'm saying philosophers despise know-how, not workers. Guilds, of course, medieval guilds, worship know-how. It was the secret. It was a secret knowledge. If you were admitted to the guild, you were given the training, and you would acquire that knowledge, but you were supposed to be certain, have certain duties to the brotherhood, certain duties to the guild. So workers themselves don't despise the know-how. They appreciate this. Philosophers, theoreticians, academics, most of whom don't work with their hands. So, just to finish now the, the talk. Interestingly enough, robotics, or the field of artificial intelligence, has now divided along those two lines, exactly along those two lines. There is on one hand symbolic artificial intelligence, the most famous branch, the one to which, say, Marvin Minsky belongs, in which everything is about representations, linguistic representations, and rules to process or transform those representations. Some of the rules are very old, go back to Aristotle, such as the syllogism, and they are simply rules to move truth from some sentences that are general to some sentences that are particular. And as an example, is all humans are mortal, I am human, and then the little piece of software by itself creates I am mortal. It's called deductive logic. Deductive logic processes truth, or rather transfers truth from general sentences, all humans are mortal, to particular sentences. I am mortal because I am human. Since deductive logic is 2,500 years old and the syllogism is such a famous and prestigious piece of software that Kant included it among his <coughs> examples of synthetic a priori, one was uh, Euclidean geometry, the other one was Newtonian physics, and the third one was the syllogism, symbolic AI is entirely Kantian. It's about manipulating formally linguistic representations. Now, notice, I'm not denying that this is true. I'm not denying that language does play a role in our, in our minds. I'm using language right now to communicate these things to you, and most of the things that I've said, with the exception of the jokes, have been declarative sentences, which are true. Right? <laughs> so I am not, this, I'm not trying to put down language. Someone needs to study logic. But look at this, the stumble block for symbolic AI. They managed to get deductive logic right because I thought had already gotten it right. But what happens when you do the opposite? When you don't want to transfer truth from all humans are mortal, but you want to try to, to I am mortal, but when you want to transfer truths from the bottom up, from a lot of particulars to general. That's called inductive logic. You know, so imagine that you are uh, surrounded by jewels and that you're going, this emerald is green. That's a particular sentence which is true. This other emerald is green. This other emerald is green. All emeralds are green. Or say that you are in a park and everybody's walking their dogs and you go, this chihuahua dog is obnoxious. This other chihuahua dog is obnoxious. That other chihuahua dog is obnoxious. All chihuahua dogs are obnoxious. Now that is an absolute truth if I've ever seen one. That Inductive logic, moving truth automatically from this, this, and this to all, has not been mechanized to this day. And the reason why is that it is learning from experience. That's what learning from experience is. You see a lot of particular cases, and then you generalize. 
But we have not been able to create a robot that generalizes. So what symbolic logic did was to cheat. They said, well, okay, so maybe that knowledge, how to, how to generalize, is not knowing that. Maybe it's knowing how. And if it's knowing how, then it's embodied in someone's body, like right, the knowledge of riding a bicycle, or the knowledge of our <coughs> So the most successful branch of symbolic, symbolic artificial intelligence <coughs> is of expert system cheats. Cheats in order to get inductive logic right. What they do is they hire an actual expert who has developed inductive logic as a know-how, and then they interview him to death, they record him with video cameras, they force him to articulate that know-how, and they finally code all that knowledge in what is called a knowledge base. The first expert system in the 1960s was a doctor who knew how to diagnose certain diseases. That is inductive logic, because it's, this patient has a runny nose. This patient also has a uh, watery eyes. This patient also has muscle aches. Therefore, it belongs to the category patients with flu. In other words, you generalize from particular symptoms to reach the general medical category under which you're classifying this doctor. And so what, what expert systems did is they robbed the know-how, I'm exaggerating a little bit here, they extracted the know-how from the bodies of doctors and chemists and other experts, put in the form of representations, and bingo, you've got yourself an inductive logic machine, which actually works. Expert systems are respected, they are used in hospitals, they are used in, in laboratories for very specific facts. They are very they are kind of idiot savants, they don't have a general intelligence, they know a lot about this one particular thing, they know about not about, about anything else, but they can do it, and they can do it with representation. The problem is they cheated. You know, the body of the doctor didn't acquire their knowledge through representations. Yeah, he read books, yeah, he did a lot of things, but you, as a doctor, need to be trained. And you need to learn by experience. And it is that experience that was not captured by the symbolic paradigm and that revealed the shortcomings of the Kantian position. Today we have a second contender of connectionism. or neural nets. Which work entirely without representations. Whereas a regular computer, which is symbolic, you give it a certain behavior by programming it, whether you're developing <coughs> a word processor, a Photoshop, or you're developing a browser, or you're developing whatever, you're putting words into it. If the user presses the letter K, then put a K on the screen. If or not, it's just letters, words, and so on. Programs are linguistic. Neural nets are not programmed. There's not a single word that goes into a neural net. Neural nets are trained. They are trained that you train a circus animal to do tricks. And, they, and they, what they do is they are able to extract patterns from the input they get, which is typically a video camera, and they are able to associate those patterns with motor patterns, so that moving the wheels or whatever method of propulsion the robot has. So a, a well-trained robot with neural nets will see, certain, will see something that looks like a door and walk through the door, not because he has the concept door somehow stored in it, but because he has practice going through doors. Normally, they hit, they bump their head on walls several times until they realize that walls offer you obstacles. Now the neural nets get reconfigured, and little by little, they begin finding their way around the room with doors. Neural nets act as pattern associators. <coughs> and as you can see, that is exactly what Hume needed. Because for Hume, the secret was the routine or habitual association of ideas the, 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 uh, <clears throat> the secret of the coherence of experience, as opposed to that of delirium,